Hey honeys, welcome back to my channel. So I told you guys last week when I did my very first paranormal video, I told you guys about my first two paranormal experiences. Today I'm gonna talk about, um, I guess like my third one. Um, maybe I'll squeeze in the fourth, I'm not quite sure. This is probably gonna be like a three video series, like once I'm done. So hopefully that's okay to my true crime fans. True crime is coming back, I promise. Probably gonna do it next week. I, I swear I'll choose a really good case, okay? And it'll be super in depth. Um, but, but today, we're gonna go ahead and tell my next paranormal story. So where I last left off, we were living in Colorado. We had gone ghost hunting. I had some experiences. And also, like I said, the apartment we were living in at the time was perfectly fine. There were no problems. But we moved out of the apartment and we actually had a tiny house built for us. Like the tiny houses you see on TV, the little wooden ones that are like on wheels. We had one built, that's where we were living. And when we were living in the tiny house in Colorado, again, all was happy, healthy, harmonious, no problem. Then we decided to move. We decided to move back to Texas, but we chose the city of Austin because neither one of us had ever lived there before. And side note, if you've never been to Austin, it's amazing. Like you've got to visit once, oh, you know, we're through this pandemic, you've got to go see Austin. Like go during the summertime, the place is amazing. Like the swimming holes, the barbecue, I still love it. Anyways, so we moved to Austin and we took our little tiny house with us. So um, we move into the tiny house and we were living in like a tiny house community. Like there's li like a whole park full of tiny houses and we were like renting a spot, okay? So this tiny house is like brand new. It was built by a builder like for us. You know, like the tiny house isn't like old and Victorian and haunted. So I didn't suspect to have like any problems. Like that thought was not even like in my brain because again, like we, we had this tiny house built. Like why would it be haunted, okay? So I don't know if like the land that we were on, we were out right outside of Austin. I don't know if the land that we were on in Austin, I mean like from my understanding, like uh, not necessarily a building or a dwelling, but just like property, land can have like spirits, you know, good or bad um, attached to it. I don't know what we encountered exactly, but when we lived in the tiny house in Austin, some strange things started happening. So to understand this story, I think you kind of have to understand how the tiny house is set up, okay? So you would walk in the door that was on one side of the house and you'd walk into the kitchen, okay? And it's a long like rectangle. Above your head was a living room loft. The middle of the downstairs was just like, um, like a kitchen eating hangout area. And then the other side of the house downstairs was the bathroom and above it was our bedroom loft. So you had the whole downstairs and then you had our living room loft and our bedroom loft. And to get up there, the living room loft had actual like stairs, like a little staircase. And then our bedroom loft had like a straight up and down metal ladder. And we did that so that the dogs could get up and down and go into the living room, but they couldn't get up into our bedroom loft and like get into our bed because when you have a tiny house and you have two big dogs, I have two big dogs, I have a lab and I have a pit bull. You have to like have a tiny bit of separation from them. So they were able to have the downstairs and, and the loft, but you know, not our bedroom. So that being said, what I very first started to experience was this, okay? I initially loved our living room loft, okay? Like that was one of the coolest things about our house. Um, we had like a little tiny couch up there that um, you could like lay on, which was really cool. You can't always fit like a couch in a tiny house, but we found one and made it work. And we had a TV up there and I don't know, it was just like, when you're in a tiny house and you're in a loft like that, the ceiling's like right above your head. So like if you're sitting Indian style, like I am right now on the floor, I mean like the ceiling's kind of like right here. Like it, it's probably like two feet above your head. That may freak some people out, but it felt like really cozy. And I loved that little loft. Like I had little twinkly lights up there and like a really nice rug and like fuzzy furry pillows and velvety pillows. And it was just perfect to like lay and lounge and watch a scary movie. Like that was my hangout spot. My husband too, we would sit up there and play like Xbox together and stuff. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I started to be like scared of that loft. 
kind of creep me out during the daytime, but of course it really creeped me out at nighttime, like as these things usually go. So one night, I don't even know what had happened. I don't even think we'd watch a scary movie or anything. I watch a lot of horror movies. Few of them really truly like get to me anymore. So I don't think I was scared at all, but I was just climbing, okay? Remember, metal straight up and down ladder to get into our bedroom loft. And it's like pretty high. I'm climbing the metal ladder to get up into our bed. And the living room loft is over my shoulder and it's just like dark over there, like all the lights are out in the house. And I just felt super scared for the first time ever. Like we had been living in the house, Colorado and Austin, like we've been in the house for like months and months. Honestly, at this point, I think we'd probably been in the house for like a year and I had had no problems. But all of a sudden this night, climbing the ladder and I'm like looking over my shoulder and I just felt so creeped out, like just so scared. And so I like scurried up the ladder super quick and I like crawled into bed and I was just like, that was weird. Like, why did I just get scared? Like what the heck could possibly be like creeping me out, you know? So I was just like, you're being silly, you're being silly. Maybe it's because the lights are out or something, just like go to bed. So I don't even say anything to my husband because there's not really like a story to tell, right? Like, I don't know, I got like spooked out, like I'm afraid of the dark and I'm an adult, you know? Like there was nothing to tell. But this continued to happen to me like every single night. After, I don't know, probably like nine o'clock, didn't want to be in the loft, didn't want to sit up there. It didn't feel cozy and comforting and inviting anymore. It actually was a place that started to really scare me. And every night I would like have to um, leave on extra. We had like recessed lighting in the ceiling and I would have to like, I used to just turn everything off and just climb the ladder because um, there's a window there and there's moonlight and you can see enough, yeah. Not anymore. I used to have to like leave the ceiling lights on, climb the ladder, and then you could um, you could turn them off from our loft. So I would have to have like lights to get upstairs. I would still feel very scared. I didn't, like I hated turning my back to that loft and being on that metal ladder. I don't know, that thing was, I guess the ladder is probably like 10 feet tall, but it's still, I would get scared. Like I get creeped out trying to like climb that ladder as quick as I could and just like feeling scared over here. And then it got a little bit creepier for me. One night I'm climbing up the ladder and as I normally did, I'm kind of like looking over my shoulder and I get further up and as I get to the top and I'm like, like getting myself onto the platform, like off the ladder and like, you know, onto the flooring. I'm I'm turning my body and I'm just kind of like out of one corner of my eye, I'm just like keeping an eye on that loft. I swear to God, I saw shadows move over there or a, like a shadow move over there, okay? And I was like, girl, your mind is playing tricks on you because you're scared of this loft now. I don't know how long this has been going on, probably at least like a month. You're scared of this loft now and your mind is playing tricks on you, like your imagination is getting the best of you, like just, you know, stop. Take a deep breath, calm down, go to bed, like, come on girl, like check yourself. But of course, not only is this fear just like progressed, I'm now seeing these shadows more and more, okay? And you know, the first time I wrote it off, second time I kind of wrote it off, like the third time I have some, like got more scared and by, I don't know, like the fifth time I was like, okay, clearly this is not my imagination, something is happening here, like, I, I really think that there's like shadowy figures over there, okay? And one night in particular, I will never forget you guys, like Bible, I, I swear. I looked over at that loft from our bedroom and I swear the shadowy figure almost looked like somebody like crouched down, like, um, like if you were like on your toes, like the, like the, or like the balls of your feet and you were like crouched down. And I swear it had like long hair, but it's just like a shadow. Like it's just like a dark, I swear. So this goes on for a little while and I finally decided to say something to my husband. Like I said in my previous video, my husband hadn't necessarily had like the experiences I had, but he was there both times to witness it and he just, he knows me, he knows like I'm honest with him. And so he, he believes me and luckily like he, he backs me up. So I finally decided to tell him because I, I realized like my mind wasn't playing tricks on me. So I told him, I was like, hey, this is gonna sound crazy, but 
for the last, you know, like month or so, I have been like kind of scared of our living room loft. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, eh, I don't go over there as much. Come about 10 o'clock or so, like I'm ready to shut it down. I come get in our bedroom loft, you know, like you don't ever catch me like staying up late after you've gone to bed over there by myself. It's because I'm like creeped out by it. And he was like, okay, like what's, like what about it is creeping you out? Like what's going on? And I tell him the story. And remember, he was just kind of quiet for like a second. And he was like, mm hmm, yep, yeah, there's something over there. And I was like, wait, what? Okay, again, he's not a skeptic, but at that point, like, hadn't had the experiences I had. And so just to hear him say, like, oh, yeah, no, there's something over there. I was like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean there's something over there? And he was like, oh, no, I have the exact same thoughts. And I was like, are you kidding me? And he was like, yeah. And he's like, I didn't really say anything. And he's like, and it doesn't really like, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't like scaring him the way it was me, but he was just like, yeah, no, I think there's something in this house. And like, I think it's negative. I think it's dark. I was like, okay, you know, um, have you been like touched? Have you heard anything? Have you seen anything? And he just told me like, again, both in past, he was just like, no, I haven't seen anything, felt anything, nothing like that. It, I just not physically felt anything, but I have like, I'm just mentally aware that it is like negative over there. It's dark. There's something going on and I don't want to mess with it. So I feel pretty creeped out. Both of us honestly started kind of staying out of there, which was sad because that's like where our TV was and everything. We started like laying just in the bedroom loft, like after we would have dinner and stuff. And we were like watching movies and shit like off from our MacBooks together. Okay, we would go over there some, but like just definitely not like late at night. Okay, so then another development. Like I mentioned, we have two big dogs, okay? And I now believe that dogs maybe sense things or see things or kind of know things that we don't, like supposedly they do. And now I'm a believer of that because um, my lab, who, like I love both of my dogs, but my lab was my. Um, like of the two, I had him, I got him first and I've had him since he was a baby and him and I like, he's kind of mine and then like our pity is kind of my husband. So the lab and I, I have a chocolate lab, his name's Coda and him and I are like best, 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 best friends. We are like very in sync, very in tune, okay? And all of a sudden, when living there for a year, he starts sitting on the stairs like I told you guys, there's like actual little staircase that goes to the living room loft. He started sitting on the stairs all the time and he has um, hip dysplasia pretty bad. So like sitting on the stairs like that is not a great idea for him because he'd like put his rear on one step and then would put like his um, front paws on the other and it was bad for him. And so when he first started sitting on the steps, I would be like, hey, come down from there. Like get down. There's also not a railing and I don't want him to fall off paranoid mom I know so I'd be like hey Coda like come down here like don't sit on the stairs but he started sitting up there and he would get it like the very top of the stairs like where the um stairs stop and like the you know like platform begins he would sit at the very top always and would just like look down on us just sit up there all the time and if I needed to go up there like I was cleaning I was gonna sit there like during the daytime anytime I needed to go up there he would like sprint, get in front of me and go up the stairs first. And this is a, it's a tiny house. This is a little staircase. It's not very big. So I would be like, dude, like calm down, like get down. I can't come up here. Like we can't both go up there. I can't like walk past you like without one of us maybe falling off the stairs. So like you have to come down. And he would get up there every time and just sit there. And he's very obedient and he's been taught well would be so defiant and wouldn't listen to me. And you guys can call it what you will. Some people might think that he just decided he liked to hang out on the stairs. I in, I didn't pick up on it instantly, but in retrospect, I think he knew that something was bad up there. I think he knew something was, I don't know, for whatever reason, it's a tiny house. Like you would think he would just feel the bad spirit everywhere, but I swear it really seemed to be in that loft. It's like he knew it was in that loft and he, was like protecting me I feel like he's like he didn't want me to go up there he didn't want me to like pass him 
it was always a thing. It was always a thing. And we had a little um, camera like mounted in the tiny house and we would um, check on the dogs like when we were gone. Oh, bet during the day when we were gone and we were at work and stuff, never on the stairs, never on the stairs. But when I was at home and I was up and I was like cleaning and cooking dinner and moving around and doing things, he, I guess he knew like I might go up or down. Nope. He would sit on the stairs and he would just like look down and like at me like in the kitchen or like, you know, wherever I was down there, um, like in the dining area. And uh, yeah, he would just kind of act like a, like a gatekeeper for me, I feel like. Next thing that happened to me, I'm laying in bed with my husband one night and we are like watching a YouTube video. We're like laughing at something together and we're both kind of like one eye open, you know, like about to pass out and he starts snoring. So I know he's, he's passed out and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go to bed. I'm, I'm about to pass out. So I plug my phone into my charger, I put it down and I close my eyes, okay? I'm drifting off to sleep, but I'm not fully, I'm not fully out yet. Like I can still hear like the dogs kind of like move around on their bed. I can hear like the humming from our fridge. I can hear like the like distant traffic, you know? I feel like wind on me, okay? Um, and not, not a breeze, like a gust of wind, like you're outside. It felt like somebody went like, like on my ear and like my neck area like but it was it was a lot and i instantly opened my eyes like it it brings me right out of my sleep it startled the shit out of me okay and i like look around yeah okay all the lights are off yes i my husband is currently snoring like he is still passed out okay he's on my left side the only thing on my right is like um my a wall a window my phone like my purse that's it there's a ceiling fan that is in um, like the middle of the house that's just over like the little open area between like the lofts and stuff. But it's 15 feet from me and it's off. It's not on. There's no fan. There's no open window. Everything's shut. So I wake up. It startles me. I look around. I know my house. I know there's no source of like this you know, um, air that I felt on me, but I'm still searching anyways because I always try to look for a logical explanation. Like I'm very level-headed. Can't find one. I get pretty freaked out. I like, I'm, at this time I had been laying down. At this point I'm sitting up in bed and like my knees are to my chest and I like shake my husband and I wake him up and I'm like, hey, um, did you, did you just, were you awake for, like I, <laughs> did you breathe on me? Did you blow on me on like this side of me? Like, I mean, I opened my eyes and you were surely looked asleep and I heard you snoring, but like, am I tripping? Did, were you just messing with me? Are you, are you playing a joke on me? And he was like, what are you talking about? You know, he'd been asleep for like a few minutes. And so he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, I just felt something blow air on me. And he instantly like woke up, you know, like I had his attention and he sits up in bed and we turn on the loft lights and he's looking around, closed windows, no ceiling fan on, my windows closed, like there's just, there's just no explanation. Like how do you just feel like somebody just like breathe of like a ton of air, like Ugh, I get like freaked out talking about it. Shortly after this, I was telling this story to one of my coworkers and she was telling me, girl, girl, you need to cleanse your house. And I was like, yeah, like, you think there's something going on? And she was like, yeah, are you kidding me? Like, you're feeling it, your husband's feeling it, like your dog's acting weird. You don't want to go into like a part of your house all of a sudden, like you're feeling something breathe on you, like, um, yeah, it's time. So I'd never cleansed a house before. I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know what to do. And she kind of just like walked me through her process. I tell my husband about this, he's all for it. He's like, please. So like that following weekend, um, I'm cleansing the house and I'm saying a prayer and I am, um, somewhat religious like i do believe in god so i'm using like um that as part of my cleansing and i'm just asking god to like protect our house and to look over us and if there's any good positive like loving spirits you know please stay with us if there's any bad negative 
um, entities or spirits that wish to do us harm, like you are not welcome in this house and you need to leave now. So I'm saying that and, and like, um, you know, things like that as I'm walking through the house and I'm cleansing, okay? And I've got open windows, I'm doing the deal. As soon as I start doing this, okay? Again, my lab, he was super calm. I remember he was like laying in the corner, like on his bed, just chilling. And I start doing this cleansing. I'm not like yelling and shouting and being crazy. Like I'm very calm. Like as if I was just like having conversation with my husband, you know? And I'm just, but like the second I start, the second I start like talking, he like springs off of his bed and he's dancing around me and I'm just kind of like, as I'm like trying to speak out loud and like keep my thoughts, um, you know, positive and keep my mind like on the task at hand of like cleansing, he's just like jumping and he's a big, he's a big dog. He's like jumping and springing all around me and he's like panting. I mean, he's acting, he's acting like if you guys have, you know, seen how active a lab is, like I have a bone in my hand and I'm waving it around. Like that's how like wild he is just dancing all, all around me. And I'm like, you know, cut it out. And my husband is um, like watching this happen and my husband tries to calm him down and he can't get him to calm him down. So I just try to ignore it, let it be and just kind of tune him out. And I just keep cleansing, you know, the tiny house. It doesn't take me very long, it's a tiny house. But um, before, as I'm like done cleansing the tiny house, I cleanse my husband, I cleanse myself. All the while, my lab is just like going berserk and acting crazy and we can't get him to calm down or relax. Oh, that was the other thing he's doing specifically. Not only was he just like dancing and jumping about and just like panting like, like, you know, so excited. He was rubbing his face and his ears, like all along the cabinets and like the fridge and like the stove. And he was just like rubbing himself and like throwing himself on the floor some. Not in, not, not like he wasn't like convulsing or like having a seizure, not like that. But just like a, like a tantrum. Like he was just like anxiety, just like, like freaking out. And he's just rubbing himself all along the walls. And my husband's like, cut it out, stop, you know? So anyways, I cleanse my husband, I cleanse myself, and I was like, I'm cleansing these dogs. Like, these are my babies, these are my children, you know? And um, I don't know how much a spirit can or can't affect them, but I think they're sensitive to it. So like, let me look out for these babies. So I remember I cleanse my pity first, right? And she just sits all calm and sweet like she always does. And then um, crazy boy. I tell Koda to sit down so I can cleanse him and I'm having to like kind of like hold on to his collar a little bit, right? And I'm doing my cleansing motions and things and he like a like he flipped a switch. He went from like, you know, 100 just like crazy mile a minute to totally calm as I'm doing the cleansing. Just totally calm. No more panting, no more like racing hard. He's not dancing, he's not jumping, he's not like rubbing himself up against the walls. He just sits very calmly and very sweetly and just like, and I say sweet, like it wasn't calm in a scary way. It was like, it was anxiety and negative before and he turned very calm and like very sweet and was just looking up at me like he normally does, like so sweet. And my husband was like, whoa. Like, are you seeing what I'm seeing? And I was like, yeah. He just did like a 180. Like, what was that? And my husband was like, see, he knows stuff has been going on and he's sensitive to it. And I think that just made him feel better. Like, I think that cleansing did something for him. And my husband said he thought he felt a little bit better. I felt a little bit better. So moving forward, living in the tiny house the rest of the time, did I still feel creeped out by the loft? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. That never went away. Did I still see shadowy something or another sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yep, I sure did. But we, I didn't get like blown on again. We didn't get like messed with when we were sleeping. Thank goodness. Uh, my dog still set up on the top of those stairs like he was protecting me, but it did feel better. And I continued to clean that house like once a week. I, th I think it was like Sundays or Mondays. I can't remember. I had like a day of the week that I would like always cleanse the tiny house. Yep. So that's my story today. It's not a super wild one. Um, where we lived at our Portland apartment and our current home, 
I guess, entertaining for you guys, bad for me. Things um, have gotten worse in our two subsequent dwellings. Those stories are to come. I will do some true crime next though, and that will be on this channel next week. So hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to my rambling. I appreciate you guys. I love you. If you enjoyed today's content, please like, comment, maybe subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Stay safe out there. Bye, honeys.